Hey guys, just got this battery in. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen. This is their self-heated model, meaning it's got heating pads inside to self-heat the battery so you can use it in climates or locations that may fall below freezing. We're starting to see more and more of these self-heating batteries come to market and it's always interesting to see how they are built inside. So we'll do our usual procedure today. We'll take a look at the specifications. We'll do some capacity testing. We'll tear it down to see how it's built inside and we'll test how that auto heating function works. This battery comes built in a very similar plastic case as many of the others we have seen on the market. 12.8 volts nominal, 100 amp hours auto heating, lithium iron phosphate. We've got the nylon carry strap on the top. We've got our positive and our negative terminals. And these are the standard epoxied in terminals. And we received four bolts of the same size. Still haven't figured out why they do that, but we do have four, so it's good to have extra. And lastly, we have what appears to be a serial number in the top left corner. Again, very similar to some of the other batteries we have looked at. So taking a look at the user's manual here, overall dimensions, it's 13 inches wide, 6.7 inches deep, and 8.43 inches in height. And the post bolts are M8 sized. Onto the specifications page, 100 amp hours. Recommended charge current is 20 amps. Minimum charge current, once again, there's a minimum charge current of 10 amps. Uh, maximum continuous charge and discharge, 100 amps. And the max pulse discharge is 280 amps for up to five seconds. And we have a nice explanation of the various stages of the lithium iron phosphate charge profile. We have some recommended settings for your charge controller or inverter. Up to four of these in series for a 48 volt system. But again, as I've said before many times, we can't guarantee that the heaters will turn on and off at the same time. So I'm not sure how that would work with a series connection. And then we have a few pages showing the connections of various parallel and series configurations. And this battery has completed charging. Once again, I use my AIMS 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger so we can go ahead, shut it off and disconnect. I'm using a 2000 watt inverter connected to some incandescent light bulbs for the load. And we're discharging at approximately 290 watts. Uh, we'll be back when this test concludes. And we tested in at 104.1 amp hours. Oh man, that looks exactly like the BMS in the other battery we just reviewed. I was hoping that wasn't going to be the case, but we'll see if this one behaves a little bit differently. Guys, this is pretty much the same exact battery as the Ampere Time. It's just in a 100 amp hour format instead of a 200 amp hour format. There's just no way it's not. We have the same carry handles. We have the same two straps. We have the exact same heater pads. The foam is in the same place. We have the same strap squeezing the metal thing into the corner of the cell. Even the temperature sensors are ran the exact same way. They are positioned on top of the QR codes, two on each side, and ran up the center. Guys, this is the exact same battery, I'm sure of it. So, The bus bars are made of aluminum. They are laser welded into place. The laser welds look perfect to me. Our balance leads are terminated with a ring terminal, and they are fixed to threaded uh, holes in the bus bars themselves, which is perfect. The wires are routed nicely up the side going into the BMS at the top. So our main positive and negative here are a pair of 8 gauge silicone insulated wires with a 200 degree Celsius insulation rating. The negative lead is done the same way. The only difference is it's covered in this uh, heat shrink here for added safety. On the positive post we have our power leads, the two uh, heating elements. There is one located on each side of the battery. And these are 12 volt, uh, 25 watt elements. And you can see how those elements are installed here. The orange part is the element. We have the negative coming in from the right and the positive coming in from the left. And then we have a layer of epoxy resin board that's sandwiching that element directly against the side of the battery. Yeah, this is going to be fairly quick because we had literally just reviewed this battery. So on the bottom of the battery here, we do have a foam pad and we have a thermal switch. This thermal switch is used for the over temperature protection. And this foam pad was positioned nicely to avoid having the switch crushed. Guys, this is the exact same VIP brand BMS. So this one, uh, so this one here is the BMS from the Ampere Time battery. Uh, and they are both VIP 3-15S TI1-H03. And here's just a picture of the QR code on the cells. These are 100 amp hour cells. You see on the right there, it says 320 watt hours. And the QR code starts with 04Q, which is typically an indication of EVE cells. Perfectly flat, I don't see any bowing or bending or anything like that. And we do have a layer of epoxy board in between each cell separating them. 
So I did notice that they do have some sort of sealant between the panel and the side uh, metal bracket here, which is good to see. Okay guys, so next we're going to test the low temperature protection and the heating functionality of this BMS. Now I expected this BMS to behave exactly like the other one, and it doesn't. And I also noticed I didn't have any problems with that Best Tech Converter when I did the capacity test. So I'm going to assume that this one is programmed differently, even though it's the same BMS from the other battery. So I've got a DC power supply on the right hand side here. This left display will show the amps coming out of the power supply into the BMS. And then this clamp meter on the left here will show the amps coming out of the BMS into the battery. So the power supply is putting out 9.8 amps and we have uh, 10 amps on the clamp meter over here. So both of these temperature sensors are from the bottom side of the BMS, which is where the control circuit for the heaters are. So I'm going to dip the first sensor in some ice water. So we see within three or four seconds, the power supply drops to five amps and the clamp meter drops to zero. So the low temperature charge protection has engaged and prevented this battery from charging and it's also turned on these side heaters. If I take the other sensor, it does the same exact thing here. So we're back to the power supply has dropped to five amps, it's powering the heaters and uh, the clamp meter, I hope you can see it there, the clamp meter is showing zero amps. So this is where it gets interesting. Taking a look at the top sensors on the BMS near where the balance leads enter. Uh, in this battery, these sensors appear to do nothing. So if I dip both of these sensors into the ice water here, you know, I can, I can wait for quite a while and nothing happens. You see we still have 9.8 on the power supply and we have 10 amps down here on the uh, clamp meter. So I thought, okay, maybe my water is just not cold enough because we've had that happen before, you know, where the BMS is set to something like negative 5C. So then I got my uh, computer duster spray here, which has been able to drop some of these sensors down to like negative 20, negative 30 Celsius. So if I spray both of these sensors here, uh, you know, our battery is still charging. We're at 9.8 and we're at 10. So uh, these sensors appear to do nothing as far as I can tell on the top of the BMS. But that's perfectly fine really because these bottom two sensors control both the low temp charge protection and the heater. So maybe that's why the Ampere Time battery had that quirky behavior and this battery did not. Because this battery is either programmed differently, programmed correctly, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. But So one last thing I want to test on this battery that I didn't test on the other one is the high temperature charge protection. So I'm going to use this heat gun. Going to heat up both sets of sensors, the top sensors, the bottom sensors, and this thermal switch. And we're going to see if it shuts down in each occurrence. Uh, so first I'm doing the bottom two sensors here. So those bottom two sensors do not appear to do anything. And we notice the battery is still charging. So now let's try the top two sensors. And the battery is still charging. Uh, so lastly we'll try this thermal switch. Oh, it did shut down. Look at that. It did shut down. So the top two sensors are doing high temp protection. All right, so now we're back to charging. So it must have been these top two sensors here. So let's try that test one more time. Yep, so these top two sensors are controlling the high temp charge protection, just not the low temp charge protection. That is interesting. And we're back to charging again. So the last thing I wanna test is this high temperature switch here or this thermal switch. All right, so I've actually melted the case of the switch here, you can see, and it did not trigger. So, however, that's not a problem at all because we do have the low temp protection and we do have the high temp protection. So I'm satisfied this does work correctly. All right, guys, so everything in this battery seems to check out okay. The low temp and high temp protection work and the built-in heater activates and deactivates as expected. I can't say that I personally am a fan of the VIP BMSs. However, I suppose, like I said, they do work and they get the job done. I will leave links to where you can find this battery in the video description. Uh, the heated model does sell for $454. The regular non-heated version sells for $310. So that's a difference of $144. Uh, so it's great to have the option of the heated version on the market. However, if you don't live in a climate where that's required, or you're going to do your own you know, battery insulation or put it in a conditioned space, uh, you may want to opt for the regular non-heated version. Uh, so yeah, any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.